respected principal coordinate coordinator of this program my students and teachers today we have gathered here to observe azad ke mahotsav that is 75 years of independence you know for independence people from every sphere of life had participated even our scientists also But scientists are, thoda, they are not as visible as others. But they are contributing not less for independent. And today, on this occasion, you are observing contribution of seventy-five scientists of India. The great thing. i want to tell that i have written lot of science biographies in essay or books almost all major indian and international scientists has been covered in my publication now i am working as the editor of science horizon Science Horizon is a monthly English magazine published by Odisha Vigyan Dhan. Sorry, Odisha Vigyan Academy, which is under the Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of Odisha. I will show you one just I have got it. 
I, I am covering all aspects of science in this magazine, also scientists' life. So whenever you find time, you go through this book. It will be helpful to know the development of science in India and at large. Now, I will tell the scientists. India, Ansat India has a glorious events in science and technology. Compared to other countries, India was much higher. Some of the theorems discovered by our scientists are later rediscovered by European scientists and mathematicians. And they take it in their name. That means the credit goes to them. Of course, now we are writing, we are coming back, we are giving credit to our scientists. The main problem was our science was written in verse form, in a Sanskrit language. So gradually, the common people could not understand. When the English people translated this Sanskrit, they wondered what a science India has. They translated Arjavatas Arjavatyam in 1832. Then people outside knew that, yes, India has a lot of potential and it has done a lot of works in science. Here, I will tell only a few achievements what India has done. If I tell all, it will take a long time. I have noted very few. You know all Pythagoras theorem? What is that theorem? In a right angle triangle, square of hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. It is called Pythagoras theorem because Greek mathematician Pythagoras is believed to have discovered this. And Pythagoras lived in 6th century BC. In India, before that, that in 8th century BC, we have a scientist, Baudhayana. He has written a book, Sulha Sutra. That is, it was used to construct altars for worship. It is here we have found Pythagoras theorem. But all over the world, everybody knows it is Pythagoras theorem. But before that, it is used in India. Number system, we are using one to nine and zero. It is the contribution of Indian mathematics to the world of mathematics. Indian mathematicians to all the mathematicians. Arjavata in 499, he has said the use of zero. And after that, Brahmagupta, he had formulated the rules of zero. That means anything, if zero is added to any number or subtracted from that number, it, that number remains unchanged. Similarly, any number is multiplied by zero, result is zero. But he had done one mistake that any number, if divided by zero, it is, it remains same. So after 600 years of Brahmagupta, Bhaskar Chajya or the second Bhaskar, he gave this rule. Anything divided by zero is, he told, Kahara, Kahara in Sanskrit. What in, in math, modern mathematics we tell infinity. So here he gave the idea of infinity. In ancient Jain mathematics, you can get a larger numbers up to 10 to the 126. They have used it in their study of astronomy. Similar another pi, you know, what is pi? It is the ratio of 
ratio of circumference of a circle to its diameter. What is value? 3.14. Or you can take 22 by 7. We generally use it in mathematics. But it is a its value is fixed. Now, mathematicians are using computer to find millions of digits of y value. That means it is irrational. Brahman, sorry, Arjavata has also said that it is irrational. Its value cannot be determined accurately. Arjavata has done another thing. The earth rotates around its axis. <clears throat> now it is common, you know, earth rotates around its axis. So we get the day and night. But at that time, everybody was surprised. His successor, Brahmagupta, Bhaskara, Kwan, even criticized him. That how earth, if the earth rotates, the birds how can come back to their nest? So at that time, it was not known that along with the earth, the atmosphere is also rotating. Now you know. And same thing was told by Poland astronomer Nicholas Copernicus in 15th century. And he is called father of rotation of earth. R.J. Hot was not getting any credit. Another one day, now the modern value is 23 hour, 56 minutes, 4.01 second, 091 second. That's the modern value. R.J. Hot has given this value 23 hour, 56 minutes, 4.1 second. You see, R.J. Hot value is 4.1. Modern value is 4.091. How accurate it was? 0 0.009 second difference. So when modern astronomers, they found it, they were surprised how he has done or calculated by hand in that age. So it is our science. Now, if I go to technology, have you anybody seen Delhi Iron Pillar? Anybody? Why is it famous? It has been in outside under sod and rain for 1500 years and there is no rust at all. That is the metallurgy Indian scientists have done. And in iron technology, in India, iron was extracted maybe 3,000 years ago. Now also, the tribal peoples in Jharkhand, they pro produce iron by heating it, the special oven. And India has produced one Damascus sword from that iron. It was import, exported to Iran, Iran, Iraq, it is. And they prepared a sword from this. It was such a thin that in one stroke, it will cut a handkerchief. That is called Damascus sword. If before that, I'll go Harpan periods, that is third millennium BC, Mohindor and Harpan. They have developed civil engineering well connected roads, drains, then ponds. What we do in modern times? Another scientist I told physicist, Konodo, K A N A D, Konodo. What he had done? He has said, found the atom structure of atom. In Europe, they tell it is the this scientist Democritus, who was on it. But at the same time, Connor has found this. It is what is atom. That means if you go 
by hitting the one atom will go to and reach a such system which we cannot hit it. That he is there. And medical science also. In the Charaka, Charaka, Susuta, Charaka is 300 BC and Susuta is 800 BC. There is a Charaka Sangita and Susuta Sangita books. Today also the European doctors are referring to. And at that time, Susuta was using plastic surgery. General surgery you are doing. What you are doing plastic surgery? He has given photos of which medical instruments. I will stop the ancient matters by mentioning only one scientist, that is <coughs> Madhava Kerala. He has found the value of sin x, cos x, tan inverse x, and pi in around 1400. Same was discovered or rediscovered in Europe by Newton, Leibniz, and William Gregory around 1600. They may not have known the Indian contribution. <coughs> or this may also happen. Knowing this also, they did not disclose. So whatever is now, all the credit goes to them, Gregory, Newton, and Leibniz. Now we'll come to modern science. During, before independence, and after the introduction of modern English courses in India. We have some great scientists like P.C. Rai, Jagdish Chandra Bose, Satyendranath Bose, Meghnath Saha, Jahangir Bhava, Subramanyam Chandrasekha, Ramanujan. You must be knowing Ramanujan. He's a magic man. How he has discovered so many mathematical theories without going to detail. Pishira, he is a chemist. He had, and he is a freedom fighter also. After independence, he became the chief minister of West Bengal. And he had discovered mercurius nitrite. Jagdish Chandra Bose, <coughs> we are telling Marconi invented, but radio. But Marconi has used the technology developed by. Satyendranath goes. And it is proved now. Subramanan Chandrasekhar, the astronomer, he has found out a limit of planets, oh sorry, stars. If the hydrogen fuel is existed, then this star will collapse. And for that condition, the star must have the radius of 1.14 sun radius. This is called Subramanyam limit. <laughs> so now we'll come to post independence. After independence, our Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru established a lot of labor science laboratories, CSIR laboratories. In every field, physics, chemistry, metallurgy, <coughs> and we have, we have developed so many. But I am sorry to say that India, after independence, has not done anything on fundamental science or basic science. Nobody has gone or got Nobel Prize from India after independence. <coughs> Who is the only Indian who have got Nobel Prize in science? C.B. Raman, in 1930, he has received the Nobel Prize. But after that, we have not got any credentials on basic science. <coughs> so there is some criticism to our science inside India and outside India. But one thing is clear, if you, we are not developed in basic science, we have developed very much in engineering and technology. <clears throat> engineering and 
technology. You see, when third industrial revolution came, the software, India has gained supremacy in software. Any country outside India you go, you can find Indian software in India. Why it was done? I'll tell one thing. When the software were developed, the American entrepreneurs, they wanted to engage Indian software engineers. Why? Because Indian software engineers are no doubt talented and they are available in cheap. That means the cost of hiring is less. But the most important is English knowledge. Indian scientists or engineers, they are thorough in English. That helps us so that we want to software leader. You see, China leader, China, China Vietnam, Korea, they are also equally caliber as India. But they could not compete because they are weak in English. Then you see space. India has put its satellite on Mars orbit for the in the first attempt. It is a credit to us. And our Chandrajana mission, it has dictated water on the moon. So now all the technologists around the world, they look for India for this astronomy. Another atomic power. Baba visualize that India must develop an atomic power to become a great leader in India. So we have now so many atomic power plants and research is going on. And also we have atomic bombs. But India has said, we'll not use the atomic bombs first. But if somebody throw, throw a bomb to us, we'll not leave them. Also India tell, it is for a peace purpose. Similar missile. If you go to Chandipur or Baleswar, the missiles developed by our late president, APJ Abdul Kalam. It is now other countries they are asking to import. <laughs> Lastly, before closing, I told the Indian contribution, modern Indian contribution. You have known for the last three years what COVID has done us. Schools, colleges closed, markets closed. And how then we open? Why? How we open? Due to vaccine. Due to vaccine, we could open. Vaccine was developed in foreign countries, also in India. <coughs> Suppose vaccine was not developed in India. What will happen? We have to not only empower, we have to go for, with the begging hand. Please give us passion. And then they will show their data. It is difficult to get. What India has done, it has supplied passion to other countries. You see the difference between Indian scientists and other scientists and our statesmen, not only scientists. It shows the credibility of our statesmen. They have taken decision. Yes will supply to outside countries. So this is, you see, we have 132 crores people in India. How much vaccine you will import or beg from others? If you could not have developed it, India population must have decreased half by this time. This is the credit of our warriors. I salute them that they have done this. So if we are not de developed in basic science, <clears throat> but the, in technology, we are far superior. So today coming to a function, this is, a, you must have read 75 scientists of Indian scientists, most more of ancient 
medieval and modern scientist. You can compare their contribution with the photography. It will be a great deal if you can do this. I tell one thing, if anybody writes an article on scientist life or their contribution and send me, I'll publish it in Science Horizon. We are publishing to at least my students also. Okay. Lastly, I thank you all for presently sitting and listening. And principal and other coordinators, Dorabu and others, for a good arrangement. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your wise words and enlightening us about the contributions of India in the field of science and mathematics. On the occasion of Azadika Amrit Mohoshchev, our students have prepared a presentation on 75 Indian scientists and their contribution to the field of science. So now I would like, like to call upon Group 1, Samrudhi Raut of 11A to come up on the stage and present her slides on Sir ECG Sudarshan. Samrudhi, please. All the students of 8, 9, and 10 are requested to join the respective breakout rooms. Pocket of us, the waiter. Talchi. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Samrithi Raut of 11A, and today I'm going to present about Inakil Chandi George Sudarshan. Inakil Chandi George Sudarshan was born on 16 September 1931, and he was raised in a Syrian Christian family. He completed his BSc honors from Madras Christian College and then moved to TIFR in 1952. He continued there till 1955. And later, from the beginning, beginning. And Good afternoon, everyone. I am Samrithi Raut of 11A, and today I'm going to tell you about Inakil Chandi George Sudarshan. Inakil Chandi George Sudarshan was born on 16 September 1931 in Palam, Kerala. He was raised in a Syrian Christian family. He had completed his BSc Honours degree from Madras Christian College and later moved to Rochester. He moved to TIFR in 1952 and continued there till 1955. Then he moved to Rochester and got married. He has also studied and taught in the University of Rochester. He has an experience of teaching for over 40 years in the University of Texas, Austin. This is his family. He has majorly contributed in the field of theoretical physics, 
His contributions include discovery of the universal theory of weak interaction of, of fundamental particles, the Sudarshan global pre representation, Gorini Kosowski Sudarshan Lindblad equation, the VA theory, and his introduced tachyons. He was the first to propose that there are particles that can move faster than light and hence named them metaparticles. He had also shown the equivalence of classical wave optics to quantum optics. And he had also co-authored many books. Some of his books are The Introduction to Elementary Practical Physics, 1961, Fundamentals of Quantum Optics, 1968, Pauli and the Spin Statistics Theory, 1999-98, and the Advanced Concepts in Quantum Mechanics, 2014. This scientist has backed many awards, and his achievements include Kerala Shastra Puraskaram for Lifetime Accomplishment in Science in 2013, Direct Medal of ICTP 2010, Padma Bhivushan, the second highest civilian award from the Government of India in 2007, the Majorana Prize 2006, first prize in physics 1985, TWAS Prize 1985, and the Bose Medal in 1977. He has also backed Padma Bhushan, the third highest civilian award from the Government of India in 1976, and the Siviraman Award in 1970. This is him in the University of Texas in Austin. Anakil Chandi George Sudarshan is an amazing and extraordinarily talented scientist. Even though he is no more with us and he took his last breath on 14 May 2018, still his contributions help us and are remembered by us till date. With this, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Samriddhi. Now I would like to call upon Dibyansi Samantrai of 11A to present his slides on Sir Harish Chandra. Dibyansi, please. Hello. Huh. Good evening, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dibyansi Samantra of 11A, now going to present about an amazing scientist, Harish Chandra. Born on 11 October 1923 in Kanpur, Harish Chandra was an amazing Indian American mathematician and physicist. He spent most of his childhood in his maternal grandfather's home in Kanpur. His education was the utmost priority of his family. A tutor was hired for him and a tutor was hired for him and special dance and music masters were also visited. At the age of nine, he was enrolled younger than his schoolmates in class seventh. In 1952, he returned from United States to India and married Lalita. Coming to his education, he completed Christ Church High School at 14 and remained in Kanpur for intermediate school college and he finished that in at the age of 16. He got his education in BNSD College and University of Allahabad. He went to Gonville and Caius College, Cambridge, where he studied uh, for his doctorate and direct, direct supervision. During this time in Cambridge, he began to uh, move away from physics and got more interested in mathematics and his qualifications were he was awarded a bsc in the year 1941 he got his master's degree in physics in the year 1943 and he got his phd in 1947 at cambridge here is a picture of harish chandra's family when they visited to his cousin Asha Tandon in Hornchurch near London in 1973, when he was became a fellow of the Royal Society. Some contributions of Harish Chandra were, he contributed mainly to the theory of numbers and mathematical analysis. He built a fundamental theory of lie and 
lie groups and lie algebras. The Harish Chandra Research Institute of Mathematical Science is named after him, which is located in Juzi. He created this beautiful mathematical field alone and was recognized worldwide for his contribution in this area. Some of his achievements are, he became a fellow of Royal Society in the year 1973 and a fellow of Indian National Science Academy in the year 1975. He also won the Cole Prize from the American Mathematical Society in the year 1954 and he received Ramanujan Medal from Indian National Science Academy in the year 1974. He was also awarded the honorary degrees by Delhi University and Yali University in the year 1973 and 1971. He was also a recipient of Padma Bhushan in the year 1977. But unfortunately, we lost this precious person on 16th October 1983. The, he died of a heart attack at the end of a week-long confer, conference in Princeton and he earlier had suffered from three heart attacks from which the first began in 1969 and the third was in the 1982. Some of the books by Harish Chandra are collected papers, admissible invariant distributions on reductive periodic groups, lectures in modern analysis and applications, autoformic forms of semi-simple lie groups. With this, I would like to conclude Thank you. Thank you, Dipyanshi. Now I would like to call upon Adyasha Mahanti of 11A to present on Professor Indira Nath. Hello, hello. Side cooker. Good afternoon, everyone present over here, respected chief guests, teachers, and all of my dear friends. I, Adesha Mahanti of class 11A, going to present today on the eve of 70, uh, 75 Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav on one of the most eminent scientists of India, Professor Indra Nath. She is also a renowned immunologist. Okay, her introduction. Indra Nath was born on 14 January 1938 and unfortunately, we lost her last year only on 24th October. She was born in Andhra Pradesh. She was, she was an Indian immunologist. Her specialization field mostly include immunology, pathology, medical biotechnology, and communica communicable diseases. Major, her major contributions included mechanisms underlying immune, uh, immune unresponsiveness in men reactions, and nerve damage in leprosy and a search for marketers for viability of the leprosy bacillus. So her mo uh, mainly her main research uh, was, uh, was based on the disease leprosy. Now let's start with her career. She did her MBBS from Ames, All Indian Institute of Medical Science in, uh, during 1957 to 61 and joined as managing director in pathology in 1969. She was also a nut filled proposed doctoral fellow in 1971 at the Royal College of Surgeons and National Institute of Medical Research London before joining Ames as a faculty in 1972. During this period in London, she came to specialize in immunology. She worked in the area of infectious diseases, lip, uh, basically leprosy with Professor John Turk at Royal College of Surgeons and with Dr. RGW Rees at the National Institute of Medical Research London. She returned with her husband to India in the early 1970s. And after coming back to India, she joined Professor Gusaran Talwar's Department of Biochemistry at Ames, which has, which has just, which was a new uh, 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 techno, means, sorry, which was just started and just initiated immunology research in India. Later in 1980, she moved to Department of Pathology and established her own Department of Biotechnology uh, in 1986 at Ames. 
She retired in 1998, but continued to work at Ames as INSA SN Bose Research Professor. She received Doctorate of Science from Pierre and Marie Curie University, Paris in 2002. She was invited for the post of Dean at Ames University in Malaysia and also a director of Blue Peter Research Center in Hyderabad. When, uh, when Rajiv Gandhi became the Prime Minister of India, he, um, he called hundreds of scientists for the development of modern science in India and Indranath was also, and Indranath was one of those hundred scientists included. Now her research, as I said before, her research mostly included leprosy. That's a similar uh, uh, leprosy a disease as well as nerve damage in the disease. Her work has also looked for indicators of the leprosy bacillus surviving. During the bacillus, she said to the people, as many people during that time in India were infected from that disease, she told that leprosy is not a leprosy is not such harmful disease or such a communicable infectious disease as that of cold and uh, cough. She had that confidence that she can fight against this leprosy, and because of that spirit only, she had made her uh, she had made good research and contribution in leprosy. Her discovery and her pioneering work are a significant steps towards the treatment and uh, vaccines for leprosy. Now, these are the awards she has been honored with. In 2003, Silver Banner, to th uh, same year, Chevalier Order National Due Merit from France, uh, from the government of France. Then Women in Science, Asia Pacific in 2002, the fourth uh, largest civilian award of India, of Republic India, Padma Shri in 1999, R.D. Billa Award 1995, Cochran Research Award 1995, Basanti Devi Amir Chand Award 1994, Om Prakash Award 1990, Clayton Memorial Lecturer 1988, First Nitya Anand uh, Endowment Lecture Award 87, Kanishka Award 1984, Shanti Shorab Award 1983, and Jalma Trust Oration 1981, which was her first award. Now, honors, she was a fellow, she was the elected fellow of the National Academy of Science in Allahabad, National Academy of Science Bangalore, National Academy of Science Insane 1992, National Academy of Medical Science 1992, Royal Challenge of Pathology and the Academic of Science for Developing World. She was also a member Scientific Advisor Committee. Uh, she was also a member to the Scientific Advisor Committee to Cabinet, Foreign Secretary Insane 19, during 1995 to 1997, Council Member during 1992 to 4, 1998 to 2006, and Vice President to uh, 2001 to 3 of the National Academy of Science India, Allahabad, and Chairperson of Women Scientist Program, Department of Science and Technology in 2003. With uh, Padma Shri in 1999, she's also awarded L. Oriel UNESCO Awards for Women in Science in 2002 and several other prestigious awards. Now, conclusion. She, uh, she was so much dedicated to her work, her research, her uh, her, uh, her confidence was so much of helping the people that she, after being retired in 1998 also, continued to work at Ames at INSA as a Bose research professor till 2003. When people look back at the research done on leprosy, they will obviously find the name of Indranath. Besides the same confidence and motivation that helped her persist with work would hopefully resonate with others and persuade them to deal with it. And as I said before that, uh, as during that time, India has maximum number of leprosy during 2000 uh, to 2005, she confidently fight against that disease. She, uh, she was able to introduce many research, may, uh, many medicines, vaccines for leprosy. And with uh, while doing her, uh, while doing PPT on her, her biography, I also got to know many things about her and how confidently, strongly she opposed this and did her work. And with this confidence also, we can achieve anything in our life. So with this, I would like to conclude. Thank you for patient hearing and have a good day. Thank you, Adyasha, for making us aware about the contributions of these great scientists in the field of science. Now, I would like to call upon group number four, Siddhiman Neeraj Mishra and Ayushman Mishra of 11B, to present their slides on Sir Gyan Chandra Ghosh. Siddhiman and Ayushman, please.
、うん、寺木道中だ。あ、確かに。A very good morning to all the curious minds gathered over here. I am Siddhiman Neeraj Mishra from class 11B. And I am Ayushman Mishra of class 11B. And we are glad to have got this opportunity to present before you all the eminent scientist, Sir J.C. Ghosh. So, first things first, who was really J.C. Ghosh? Jnana Chandra Ghosh or Jnanendra Chandra Ghosh was an Indian chemist known for his contributions through scientific research, industrial development, and technology education in India. He'll be remembered for laying the foundation of the newly found Dhaka University. Secondly, he was the uh, di first directoral head of IIT Kharagpur and rendering his services to the Indian Institute of Sciences, Bangalore. So let's talk a bit more about his life. He was born in Girid near Purulia district of British India. He is the son of Ram Chandra Ghosh, he belongs to a family of Mica mine owner and a Mica merchant. He had his initial schooling at Girid High School, where he stood first in the Chota Nagpur division in 1909 and hence enrolled in the President's College, Kolkata, where he was among the finest students who got fourth position in IAC examination, while his other famous classmates, Satyendra Nath Bose and Meghnath Saha, topped the list and got the third position respectively. He passed both BSc and MSc as first in the first in chemistry and during his time he came under the inspiring influence of Acharya Prafulla Chandra Ray. The Vice Chancellor of Calcutta University, Sir Astosh Mukherjee, invited him over to join as a lecturer even before the results were published, proving how much he was sought after. Enabled by Sir Tarak Nath Palit Scholarship and Prem Chandrachan Student of the Year Award, he moved to England to pursue his doctoral degree at the University College of Sciences in London. He took up various concepts of photochemistry and that led to the exposition of the theory of anomaly of strong electrolytes and thus the ionization theory. His scientific research drew appreciation from many of the greatest scientists of his era, namely Max Planck, William Bergs, Walter Nest, and then consequently in 1918, he was awarded with DSC for his research on strong electrolytes. In 1921, J.C. Ghosh returned to India, joining the newly established Dhaka University as a professor and head of the Department of Chemistry. When he served the university for about 20 years and had success in research and building a brilliant school of physical chemistry, the most intensive research he carried, out, uh, he carried out includes field of photochemistry, biochemistry, and agricultural chemistry. He was truly inspired by his mentor, Acharya Prafulla Chandrari. Don't believe it. Have an example for it. He was truly dedicated to the development of industries in India, just like his mentor. He was the protagonist of this successfully guided research work, basing on the technical aspects of producing from Indian raw materials, such as the phosphatic fertilizers, ammonium sulfate, potassium chlorate, etc. Not only was he a scientifically sound person, but he also had a charismatic personality. He attracted scientific research towards him just like a magnet through his sheer dedication, determination, and devotion towards the work. His service at the Dhaka University is considered to be the most crucial and defining phase of his career that shaped the Indian, Indian education. In 1939, he was called upon to su succeed C. V. Raman as the head of the Indian Institute of Sciences, Bangalore. In 1954, he left for Calcutta to become the Vice Chancellor of the Calcutta University, where he started focusing on the improvements of the living conditions of the students and was awarded with Padma Bhushan by the government of India in recognition of his ability and service to the country. He took part in all the stages of the preparation of the second five-year plan, working out with proposals for the expansion of facilities of technical uh, education at various levels. Sadly, he took his last breath, still serving the country through his work on 21st of January, 1959. Now, you all must be wondering 
he has gained so much respect and dignity but for what well in order to answer that question let us dive into the contributions he made to the scientific world the first one is the world famous ionization theory he was known for the development of the anomaly of strong electrolytes and their dissociation which is termed as the ionization theory secondly the study on photocatalyst Deshi goes other important contribution include his extensive study on photocatalyst under the influence of polarized lights differential thermal analysis or dta the differential thermal analysis or the dta is a tool of systematic study of solid catalyst last but not the least the fischer tropsch synthesis the fischer tropsch synthesis is the process of obtaining liquid fuel from carbon monoxide and hydrogen and the process of obtaining nh3 from nitrogen and hydrogen he was a person who believed in close interaction between teachers students and the administration during his highest involvement period at iit kharagpur he was called upon to lead his alma mater at calcutta university the news of his departure the students were heartbroken they went on a mass strike sir jc ghosh addressed the crowd and broke down in the middle of the speech tears rolling down his cheeks this thus proves how much he was valued not only as a scientist but also as a lovable guide every student desired to have with this positive note we would like to end our presentation thank you and have a wonderful day ahead thank you Thank you, Siddhiman and Ayushman. Now I would like to call upon Group Number Five, Ishan Dash Mishra and Om Shri Chandan, to present their slides on Madam Kamal Jai Singh Narayan. Hello, check. Good morning, respected chief guest, sir, respected principal, madam, and all my curious minds present here. I am Ishan Das Mishra of Class 11B, and my co-presenter Om Shri Chandan. We are of 11B. So today we would be speaking. Today we would be speaking about Madam Jai Singh Randhav. Over to you.
How sad it is that we have forgotten such eminent scientists who have done a, a great, a tremendous job for the society and for the mankind. So here are some pictures of Madam Randeev. On the left hand, bottom corner, with respect and honor of Madam Randeev on her 104th birthday that was celebrated on 8th November 2021, this was the Google Doodle. So these are some special studies of Madam Randeev. When Randeev was working in Tata Memorial uh, Cancer Hospital in Bombay, when she worked in the Department of Pathology, she reported on the studies on the comparative morphology of normal mammary glands of four strains of mice varying in the susceptibility of breast cancer. In February 1945, she reported on the studies of cancer of the breast that had drawn special attention. She attempted to correlate the course of the disease with heredity, genetics, childbearing, histological structure, and various other factors. Malignancies of genetic origin in children in abnormal states of blood, known as dyscrasis, received her special attention. A major study the on-ground study that Madam Randeev with her team, Satya Niketan, a voluntary organization of Ahmed Nagar undertook in 1989 was the collection of data related to nutritional condition of tribal children in the Alok Taluk of Ahmed Nagar district of Maharashtra. Randeev also provided advice to women in the rural areas, in the rural villages near Rajpur and Ahmed Nagar on health, and medical care through government-sponsored projects under the aegis of Indian Women Association. She has done a great job and published her scientific research paper for, over, for more than 200 scientific papers on cancer and leprosy. Some of those works include beetle quid swing and oral cancer, experimental studies on hamsters, effect of urethrin on nucleic acids, influence of splenectomy, on the development of leukemia in male mice in the Indian Cancer Research Center strain. Characterization of mammary tumor virus of the strain ICRC. We should not forget that she was awarded by many awards, many prestigious awards to recognize her. She was awarded by Bharat Ratna, India's third highest Civilian Award for Medicine in 1982. She was awarded the first Silver Jubilee Research Award in 1964 of the Indian Council, Indian Medical Council of India. This award included a golden medal, a gold medal, and a cash prize of rupees 15,000 during that period of time. She was also awarded with G.J. Watmal Foundation Prize for 19, in uh, 1964 in the field of microbiology. She was an emeritus medical scientist of Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR. Sadly, we have forgotten these eminent scientists who have done a lot for the society, for the human society, for the whole world. So therefore, it was our absolute honor 
that we got this opportunity to describe, to shower our thoughts on this kind of great scientist. Therefore, on this occasion of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, Vigyan Ke Saath Bharat Ki Udaan, Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan, Jai Vigyan, Mera Bharat Maan. Thank you. Thank you, Ishan and Noam. We definitely learned a lot from your presentation. Now, I would like to call upon group number six, Sumedha Prasad and Adyasha Anushka Sahu to present on Sir K. Srinivasa Krishna. Sumedha and Adyasha, please. Hello. Hello. It is better, much better to have knowledge and wisdom than gold and silver. With this, a very pleasant afternoon to all the ignited minds listening to me. This is Adyasha Anushka Sahu and this is my colleague Sumedha. And today we're going to be representing on one of the most renowned scientists, K.S. Krishnan. Karya Manikam Srinivam Krishna, also known as K.S. Krishna or K.S.K., is one of the most eminent scientists of pre-independent India. He is mostly known as the discoverer of the Raman effect. Yes, the discovery that brought India the first and till date the only Nobel Prize in science. He is one of the most outstanding physicists of India. A close friend, Jawaharlal Nehru, said that what is remarkable about Krishnan is not that he is a great scientist, but something much more. He is a perfect citizen, a whole man with an integrated personality. He has the ability to recognize and exploit different branches of physics and put them together. Many of his contributions are as follows. He opened the peepholes of science by, by entering into the interior of molecules. First peephole was the discovery of the Raman effect. The second was the discovery of ingenious, the second was the discovery of ingenious experimental technique to establish correlations between the magnetic properties of crystals and their internal architecture. The third was the mapping of energy distribution of electrons in the graphite crystals. He played an important role in the discovery of science and technology in India. He is also a staunch nationalist. Guess what? He popularized the spreading of knowledge in their mother tongue. He believed that one could easily convey the difficult topics of science in the mother tongue. Not only this, he was a great scientist. He was an enthusiast. He used to play football, uh, football and, a ten and he was also a tennis player. Besides this, he was also interested in Indian philosophies and uh, Indian literature. His interests were not only confined to research itself. He was also he uh, he also used to read a lot of literature, philosophies, and uh, India and Indian religion. Now he m managed everything uh, hand to hand. Now I would like to request my colleague to continue with the presentation. Thank you, Adarsha. Let's now know about some of the eminent accomplishments gained by Sir K. Srinivas Krishnan. He received a number of honors both in India and in abroad. He was elected as a fellow of the Royal Society of London in 1940. He was awarded the title of Knight Bachelor in 1946. In 1948, he became the general president of Indian Science Congress the title of Padma Bhushan was awarded to him by the government of India in 
In 1955, the U.S. National Academy of Science invited Krishnan to the guest speaker at their annual dinner. It was a rare privilege for him. He was the first recipient of the Bhatnagar Memorial Award in 1961. Early life, early life of K. Srinivasa Krishnan. His father was a farmer as well as a scholar deeply inversed in the Tamil literature. In 1928, Shri Krishnan, Sakesh S. Krishnan moved to the Dhaka University as the reader in the Department of Physics, where he studied magnetic properties of crystals in relation to these structures. Krishnan, along with other rising scientists such as Shandala Banerjee, P. C. Guha, and Ashutosh Mukherjee developed an elegant and precise experimental technique to measure the magnetic anisotropy of diamagnetic and paramagnetic crystals. In 1933, he returned to Kolkata to take up the position of Mahindrala Sikars, professor of physics, where he continued to have fruitful collaborations with Banerjee in detailing the relationship between the magnetic properties of crystals and its structure. This led to the discovery of Krishnan Banerjee method for measuring the magnetic susceptibility of small crystals. In 1942, he moved to Allahabad University of Physics where he studied the physics of solids, especially metals. Unfortunately, this great soul died of a massive heart attack on 14 June 1961, at the age of 62 only. Even today, people claim that Krishnan's findings and tribute to the Indian community was one of the top 10 achievements of the 19th century. Not only was he a co-discoverer of Raman effect, but also this young man was a strong supporter of his future ambitions. He keenly dedicated his whole lifetime for the discovery of a number of path-breaking contributions. Being a brilliant scholar throughout his lifetime, Krishnan continues to inspire many even today. While his name lives on in various theories in the field of physics and science. With this, we would like to sign off. Thank you everybody for your patient hearing. Wish you all a fruitful and great day ahead. Thank you, Sumedha and Nadia Shah. Now I would like to call upon Sai Suman Dabata of 11C to present his slides on Madam Kamla Soni. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Saishan Vibhata from 11C. And today I'm going to speak a few lines about Ma'am Kamla Soni, who was an Indian biochemist and uh, contributed a lot to our country and to the field of science. So she was born on 8th of June, 19, 1912 in Indore. After she graduated, she had applied for, uh, she had applied as a student researcher at Indian Institute of Science, but her request was rejected as she was a girl. So after this, he protested, uh, protested and her, her request was accepted by Sir C. V. Raman. And she, uh, she worked uh, in the uh, Indian Institute of Science as a, as a student searcher. Of, in the year of 1939, she was the first ever Indian woman to receive the PhD in the field of scientific discipline. So her first major uh, research was on the proteins present in the milk. So uh, from from her first research, she was able to find a find a way in which we uh, the the cutting of the milk could be prevented. Okay. 
So her second uh, research was on Nira, which was the extract of uh, different species of palms, which would help in uh, preventing malnourishment. So and she was also awarded uh, the Rashtrapati Award for this research. She was also the elected president of CGSI for the year of 19, uh, 1982 to 1983. So this is all I wanted to share uh, about ma'am Kamala uh, Soni to you all guys and thank you. Thank you Sai Suman. Now I would like to call upon Shivanshi Parasar of 11C to present on Sir Lalji Singh. Shivanshi please. A very warm afternoon to one and all present over here. Respected engineer Shri Mayadhar sir, teachers and all my dear friends. This is Shivanshi Parashar of 11C going to, going to present about the great scientist Lalji Singh. Well, talking about his early life and education, Lalji Singh was born and raised in a small village, Kalwari, in Jaunpur district of Uttar Pradesh, India. After completing his 12th standard in the science group at school, he attended the Banaras Hindu University to pursue his graduation in zoology and cytogenetics. Next comes his university education. Singh obtained a BSc degree in 1964 from Banaras Hindu University, BHU. Singh then worked on his, on his doctoral research at the Banaras Hindu University, receiving a degree in 1971 for his work on evolution of karyotypes in snakes in the areas of cytogenetics under the guidance of his professor, S.P. Ray Chaudhary. Next comes his research career. In 1972, Singh worked. In 1972, Singh worked, Singh worked in a research associate at the Department of Geology, University of Calcutta, and in April 1974, he was reported at pool officer at CSIR. In June 1917, Singh returned to India and joined the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, CCMB, in Hyderabad as a senior scientist. Singh developed and established the DNA fingerprints technology for forensic investigation of crime and civil disputes. From 2014, Singh was associated with several academic and research organizations in various capacities. These included being a member of Governing Board of the Indian Council of Agriculture Research, ICAR New Delhi, Chairman Chairman of the Ad Research Advisory Com Council, RAC, of National Bureau of, of Animal Genetic Resources, NBAGR. Well, Singh was... Well, he was also the member of board of Governors of Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Iser Mohali. Well, now let's see innovations and contributions to science and technology. First comes novel insight into into evolution and migration of humans. The fundamental DNA-based research carried out by Singh and his colleagues on primitive tribes, including the tribal population of Andaman and Nicobar Islands provided critical insights into the evolution and migration of humans, suggesting that out of Africa root modern humans about 60,000 years ago to the Andaman Islands. These findings have furthered the scientific community understanding of the origin of man in terms of evolution and migration from place to place. Next comes the DNA-based molecular diagnostics. Until 1998, India did not have an adequate facility for diagnosis of genetic disorders prevalent in the country. The fundamental research carried out by Singh and his colleagues in that area led to conceptualization and establishment of India's first DNA-based diagnostic library in the country. The lab, 
the lab later evolved into a separate institute, the Center for DNA Fingerprinting and Diagnostics in Hyderabad, India, to provide advanced DNA-based molecular diagnostic services for the nation. Next comes the Genome Foundation. In 2004, Singh founded a non-profit research and service organization, the Genome Foundation, with the aim of diagnosing and treating genetic disorder affecting the Indian population, in particular the underprivileged people residing in rural India with the participation and voluntary services of scientists and professions. Next are the books written by Lalji Singh, which we should refer in our future. You Deserve, Be Conserved, Scientunic Tell, The Tale of Genome and DNA, DNA Fingerprinting, The Witness Within, My Travels in the Witness Box. Next comes the awards and honors. Next comes the awards and honors given to Singh. Some of the notable awards conferred to Singh are as follows. Indian National Science Academy Medal for Young Scientist, TSIR Technology Award, this award was given to him twice, first in 1992 and next in 2008, Vigyan Gaurav Award in 2003, FICC Award between 2002 to 2003, the New Millennium Plagues of Honor 2002 for services in the field of biological sciences from the Prime Minister of India at the 89th session of Indian Science Congress. Next, he also got J.C. Bose National Fellowship Award in 2006. Last but not the least, he was, he was awarded the prestigious the Padma Shri Award in 2004 in recognition of his contribution to Indian science and technology. With this, I would like to sign off. Thank you for your patient hearing. Thank you, Shivanshi. Now I would like to call upon Darshana Dash of 11C to present her slides on Dr. M. K. Vainu Bapu. Darshana, please. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon, esteemed chief guest, my friends and my teachers. My name is Darshna Dash, and today I'm here to present about an eminent mind of India, Manali Kalat Venu Bappu. M.K.V. Bappu lived from 10th August 1927 to 19th August 1982, was an Indian astronomer and president of the International Astronomical Union. M.K. Bappu obtained his PhD degree in 1952 from Howard College, Massachusetts, the United States of America. His specialization was in astronomy. He was a chemistry fellow, Hale Observatory, 1952, and director of UP State University, Nanital, from 1954 to 60. Of Astronomical Observatory, Kodaikanal, 1960 to 77, and of Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Bangalore, from 1977 to 82. Speaking about his early life, Bappu was born on 10th August 1927 in Chennai as the only son of Manali Kukuzi Bappu and Kalat Sunanna Bappu. His family originally hails from Thalassery in Kerala. His father, just like his son, was an astronomer at the Nizamia Observatory in Andhra Pradesh. For Bappu, astronomy was a lifelong passion. Bappu, along with two of his colleagues, discovered the bappu bok new comet. On 2nd July 1949, when Bappu was taking pictures of the night sky, he spotted a bright moving object, which he had rightfully understood to be a comet. 
When he returned to his professor, Bart, and colleague Gorton, they, conf uh, they confirmed the discovery. They calculated the orbit of the comet, which revealed that it would appear only after 60,000 years. He was awarded the Donhoe Comet Medal by the Astronomical Society of the Pacific in 1949. The, the International Astronomical Union officially named the comet as Bapu Bok Mukik Comet, C194991. This is the only comet with an Indian name. In a paper published in 1957, American astronomer Olin Shadrick Wilson and Bapu had described what would later be known as Wilson-Bapu effect. The paper opened up the field of stellar chromospheres for research. He made an exhaustive survey of Wolfrate stars, a subject in which he remained an authority throughout his life. He investigated the incidence of hydrogen and potassium emission from ionized calcium in late type stars. The results revealed a relation connecting the equivalent width of the, of the H and K lines with the absolute magnitude of the star. The analysis was done jointly with Professor O.C. Wilson and the relation has entered the annals of astronomical literature as the wilson bapu effect. This is one of the fundamental relations often used in stellar luminosity determination. He also obtained an excellent series of spectra of RT orge, a c variable and the shell of Pleione. His research areas covered physics of the sun, stars, and solar system, physical phenomena in galactic and extragalactic systems and astrophysical techniques. On his return to India, Bapu was appointed to head a team of astronomers to build an observatory at Nanita. Is the first of building an indigenous large optical telescope and a research observatory led to the founding of the optical observatory of Kalpalur and its large telescope. The observatory is one of the main observatories of the Indian Institute of Astrophysics, also initiated in its modern avatar by Bapu in 1971. Later, a number of discoveries were made from the, from the very same. Bapu's industry and far-reaching far -reaching vision led to the foundation of the National Observatory in Uttar Pradesh, now in Uttaranchal, rejuvenated the Kodaikanal Observatory and created the Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Bangalore, and the Observatory and Kavlu, Tamil Nadu, which I just talked about. Bapu was, was an INSA council member starting from 1972 to 74. He was an authority on the history of astronomy in India during the British period. He painstakingly collected material from the center and state archives and had hoped to put down the history of astronomical studies in a book. Although that dream remains unfulfilled, he has left behind a series of articles describing the endeavors of the astronomers over the last two centuries. Bapu was a fellow of Indian Academy of Sciences, Bangalore, Vice President, 1980 to 1982. Foreign member, Royal Society of Science, Liege, Belgium, Honorary Foreign Associate, Royal Astronomical Society, London. Member of Astronomical Society of India, President, 1973 to 1974. And an International Astronomical Union, Vice President, from 1979 to 82. He was a recipient of the Donau Comet Medal by Astronomical Society of the Pacific in 1949, S.S. Bhatnagar Prize, 1971, Padma Bhushan, 1981, and Satyendra Nath Bose Medal of INSA, 1983. It is my absolute pride to announce that Indian National Science Academy has instituted INSA Venu Bapu Memorial Award in his very honor.
concluding, I'm extremely honored to have given the opportunity to speak about such a great mind. Thank you. Thank you, Darshana. Now, I would like to invite our chief guest of the day, Engineer Sri Madhur Swai, sir, to please come up on the stage. I would also like to invite our award principal, ma'am, Madam Indira Bhattacharya, to be present on the stage and felicitate, sir. Ma'am and sir, please. I would also like to request all the science teachers to be present on the stage. Now, our principal ma'am is presenting sir with an uttariya. A bouquet of flowers, a sapling, a token of love, and the school magazine Kusumayani. As this sapling will grow with time, so will our bond, sir. Thank you very much for spending your valuable time with us and enlightening the young minds. Thank you so much, sir. Moving forward, I would like to call upon group number 10, Ekatwa Kumar Dansena and Jay Gopal Tripathi of 11D to present their slides on Dr. M.S. Narasimhan. Ekatwa and Jay Gopal, please. Check on. Okay. Mathematics is not just about graphs, solutions, or equations, but it's about understanding. A very good afternoon to everyone present over here. We, the students of 11D, are going to present about the mathematicians by choice, Dr. M. S. Narasimhan, and I am Ekatukuma Dansena, and my helper is here are going to present on him. Narasimhan is one of the most renowned mathematicians known all over the world for his extraordinary depth and breadth. He was one of the most talented mathematicians in India who was known for his contribution in the field of differential functions, uh, algebraic geometry, representative theory, and partial differential uh, equations. Narasimhan was born in 7 June 1932 in a small village, Tandare in Tamil Nadu, uh, and completed his elementary education in a rural household. He completed his undergraduate education in Loyola College of Madras, which was best known for its uh, undergraduate uh, studies during that period. He completed his PhD in uh, University of Mumbai under the doctoral advisor of K.S. Chandrasekharan, who was known for his works on number theory. Thank you, Jai Gopal. Now, let's note about the various uh, works he had done in the field of mathematics. First, he collaborated with a Japanese scientist named Takeshi Hotaro and gave the Takeshi Hotake theorem, according to which elliptic operators 
were always in a synchronized way with the Kochi squad's inequalities. Second, he, to, he also collaborated with an Indian scientist named C.S. Seshadri uh, and gave a breakthrough theorem. Uh, the name of the theorem was Narasimhan Seshadri theorem. And it was about a breakthrough because it gave a global concern on the uh, geometry and algebra and number system, which lasted for about half a century. Then again, he gave a theorem with the help of R.R. Simha, another Indian scientist, and with him, he gave the Simha Narasimhan theorem, according to which vector bundles were always present in a stable mood on a Riemann stage. A man with such talents also has many awards and recognitions. His awards are numerous. Some of them are listed. Narasimhan, Narasimhan received the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize in 1975. He was the receiver of Padma Bhushan, the highest, highest civilian honor, uh, third highest civilian honor in India. He was the only Indian to receive the King Faisal International Prize in Saudi Arabia. He was also the recipient of the World Academy of Science. Uh, he was also a uh, fellowship received by the Indian Academy of Science, National Academy of Science, and also by the Royal Society of London. It is rightly said that people come and go, but their ideas never go. In the same way, Dr. M.S. Narasim might have left us on the 15th May 2021. However, his ideas, his philosophies, and his learningness is always present and embedded within all of us. So, at last, I would like to see that I hope that we were able to give a tiny tribute to this great man. And with this saying this, I sign off. Thank you and have a nice day ahead. Thank you, Ekatwa and Jai Gopal. Now I would like to call upon group number 11, Vidisa and Delisha Ray of 11D to present their slides on Dr. Panchanan Maheshwari. Vidisha and Delisha, please. Hello. Good morning, Good morning, respected judges, teachers, and my dear friends. I am Bidisha of Stand 11D. Standing before you to present our PPT on Dr. Panchanan Maheshwari, a renowned botanist on the occasion of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Dr. Maheshwari is the pioneer of India's plant embryology. He was born on 9th November 1904 in Jaipur and died on 18th May 1956 in Delhi. He was awarded the Fellow of the Royal Society 1965. He was an alma mater from Ewing Christian College in Allahabad. He published a book by him, which was an introduction to the embryology of angiosperms. Now I would like to throw some light on the life and education of Dr. Maheshwari. Dr. Maheshwari was born on 9th November 1904 in Jaipur. He was educated in, uh, in uh, and he was educated in Ewing Christian College in Allahabad, intending to pursue a career in medicine. Now, let me brief you all about the research work, research work of Dr. Maheshwari. Dr. Maheshwari was an eminent botanist specializing in plant embryology, morphology, and anatomy, plant physiology, and biochemistry. He worked on embryological aspect and popularized the use of embryological characters in taxonomy. Another landmark discovery by Dr. Maheshwari was production of haploids using anthraculture. He even dis uh, this discovery led to a new era in plant biology and formed a path of de developing many improved crop varieties. Dr. 
Dr. Maheshwari was also noted chiefly for his invention of technique of test tube fertilizations of angiosperms. This invention has allowed the creation of new hybrid plants that would not be previously be crossbreed naturally. Now let me brief you all once again about the contribution of Dr. Maheshwari. We need to understand the concept of his uh, work on seed plants and mainly on the flowering ones. A pollen grain has two sperm cells. Those two sperm cells helps in the fertilization of embryo and later on gets divided into many different parts of the plant. Just now, as a fertilized human egg makes a human. Now let me brief you about the book published and the article written by Dr. Maheshwari. Dr. Maheshwari's book, An Introduction to Embryology in Angiosperms, was published in 1950, is considered a classic and is one of the most quoted biology texts. He even wrote science articles which was based on power plant and can attract the young generation. He even wrote Gandhiji's one of the most famous movement known as Satyagraha movement and which we all know commonly known as indigo plantation, which is used as a dye in textile manufacture. Maheshwari's bibliography was published from 1929 to until his death, which included about 150 publications and more than 300 have been uh, credited to his students. Now, let us know something about the awards and honors received by Dr. Maheshwari. The most prestigious degree, Doctor of Science, was awarded to him in 1927 and 1931, respectively. He got the, he honored from the Indian Botanical Society, uh, or by the, honored him with the Birbal Sahani Medal in 1958. He was a general president-elect of the Indian Science Association in 1968, a role he could not fulfill on account of his untimely death on 18 May 1966. He was elected as a fellow of the Royal Society, FRS, in 1965. Botany, Botany the science of vegetable kingdom, is one of the most attractive, most useful, and the most extensive department of human knowledge. We, we hope, hope you like, like our, our presentation. presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Bidisha and Delisa. Now I would like to call upon Group 12, Pranshu Lenka and Priyaranjan Mishra of 11T to present the slides on Professor Peter Radhakanta Adhika. Pranshu and Priyaranjan, please. Slide attack audio. Could I go? Research is to see what everybody else has seen and to think what nobody else has thought of. Good afternoon, everyone present over here. I am Priyaranjan Mishra, a and student I'm, of 11D. And I'm Pranshu Lenka, a student of 11D. Today, we are going to highlight certain information about Professor Pardur Radhakanta Adiga, a profound biochemist of our country. So let's begin without any further ado. So who was Professor Radha, Radhakanta Adiga? He was a renowned endocrine biochemist and a reproductive endologist. He was born in the village of Barkur near Udapi, a southern district of Karnataka. Being born in a family of priests, his day began by carrying out priestly duties. He was greatly inspired by his scholarly father and his eldest brother, a Vedic scholar and a Sanskrit scholar. He finished his schooling in the temple town of Udapi, Karnataka, and he finished his MSc from University of Kerala, a nearby state of Karnataka. He also obtained his PhD from the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore in 1963. He worked there for 25 years under the supervision of the late P.S. Sharma. He was honored with many positions from being 
an assistant uh, assistant professor to a student from uh, to being a professor so i would like pranshu to continue with this presentation thank you priyanjan so let's talk about his personal life and his contribution to the field of science he was generally a very practical person with a very frank nature he never failed to express what he felt he was very generous and kind so he had a single minded ability he had no other hobbies other than science he didn't know how to spend his time in home rather than going to the laboratory he was very strict with his habits and diets but he had one bad habit and his weakness was with crippling addiction to cigarettes so let's talk about his addiction uh, let's talk about his contribution to science is he researched on a vitamin k protein by this process he came to know about the new so by this process he came to know about the new amino acid known as laroharginine he also researched about lathyris sativus which is famously known as kesritol and he deto- he mentioned by his research that a neurotoxin was present in the plant which caused a very hazardous disease known as neural atherism in humans so let's talk about his some awards and honors atiga received several awards starting with the giri memorial award from for the best phd thesis in indian institute of science in 1963 he also got the shanti swarup bhatnagar award in 1980 which was regarded as one of the most prestigious awards in bio sciences community during that period he was also a fellow in indian national academy and also a member of new york science academy he has he was he has written many books and he was one of the editor of prostates of endocrine biology so we all know how talented and genius he was his truly remarkable personality still never fails to inspire us and the young brooming minds of india so on this auspicious occasion of 75 azadika amrit mahotsav we all would like to contribute wholeheartedly to the minutes of scientists so with this we will like to conclude our presentation thank you thank you thank you pranshu and priyanjan for your informative presentation now i would like to call upon subhaprakash shahu and swajita sulakna of 11e to present this slides on professor rodam narasimha remdi rahi ho hello hello sir a very good afternoon to one and all present over here in this auspicious occasion of vigyan ke sath bharat ki udan in commemoration of 75 years of independence azadi ka amrit mahotsav i am subha prakash sahu i am swajita sulagna the students of class 11e are standing in front of you to present the biography of late professor rodam narasimha मिती लेट प्रोफेसर रोदम नरसिम्हा नरसिम्हा वॉज बॉर्न इन जुलाई नाइनटीन थर्टी थ्री इन अ विलेज ऑफ कर्नाटका हिज फादर वॉज अ प्रोफेसर ऑफ फिजिक्स ही कंप्लीटेड हिज स्कूलिंग एट आचार्य पाठशाला इन गांधी बाजार नेबरहुड ऑफ बैंगलोर During this time he visited the Tata Institute where the Spitfire aircraft was displayed which caught his interest After his diploma Narasimha worked with Satish Dhawan focused on decreasing jet engine noise Now let's know the major contributions of Professor Rodam Narasimha towards our nation Development of Tejas a light combat aircraft followed by development in fluid dynamics His efforts resulted in India's first parallel computer and the development of a code for tropical weather prediction. 
His main goal was to prove a monstrously difficult system, the Indian monsoon. Due to his extraordinary talent, he has received many awards in India and abroad. The major awards are Padma Bhushan, India's third highest civilian award and Padma Vibhushan, India's second most highest civilian award. Here are some major theories given by him which have helped our nation along with our defense system to improve a lot. The most famous theory was given by him in the year 1961. Now moving on to the conclusion, the collaborations of Narasimha can be seen in the JNCASR Bangalore. Scientists like late Professor Rodam Narasimha and Nambi Narayanan will always remain in our hearts who have helped in establishing the rocketry system of our country. With this, we would like to sign out. Thank, Thank you, you for, for your patient hearing. Students participating in the inter-house English debate competition are requested to stand up. All the participants may leave the activity hall and go to room number 402 for their competition. All the participants of the English inter-house debate competition. Hello. Thank you, Super Prakash and Swachita, for your presentation. Now I would like to call upon group number 14, Aditya Kumar Sahu and Nilesh Gagandas of 11E to present their slides on Professor PC Vaidya. Aditya and Nilesh, please. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Present over here. I am Aditya. And I am Nilesh. Today, we are going to present a PPT on the topic Vigyan ke saath Bharat ki udaan. Friends, as you all know, we are celebrating 75 years of India's independence, that is, Azadi ka Amrit Mahasav. Our country has achieved a lot of milestones in these 75 years, especially in the fields of science and technology. We have achieved these milestones with the constant determination and dedication of our scientists who have worked day and night for the betterment and well-being of the people of this country. Today, we are going to discuss about one such scientist named Prahlad Chunilal Vaidya, who was born who was born on 23rd May 1918 in the village of Shahpur in Gujarat. He was an Indian physicist, mathematician, and apart from his scientific career, he was also an educationalist and a follower of Gandhian philosophy in post-independent India. One of his most important discoveries were his Vedic matrix. Now let's look at some of his educational qualification. He has done his primary education mostly from Bhavnagar and then he went for higher education studies in Mumbai. He finished his high schooling at Ismail Yusuf College and joined the Institute of Science in Mumbai. He received a BSc degree majoring in subjects like maths and physics, and he also completed a MSc degree with applied maths major. So, how his political career started? He started teaching at Dharmendra Singhji College of Rajkot. He joined as a lecturer in 1940. After some time, he take, it was taken over by the royal family of Rajkot due to some differences with the new management. He resigned the college in 1941 and subsequently joined the freedom fighter 
Prithvi Singh Azad at Ahimsa Pram Sangh Institute of Physical Education, where he was the principal for the non-violent freedom struggle for the youth. Here comes the turning point in his life. In 1942, he wrote to Professor Vishnu Vasudev Nalikar, expressing his aching desire to study relativity theory and gravitation. The study of relativity theory and gravitation that was proposed by him to Nalikar was approved, and by this he immediately moved to BHE, BHU, Varanasi, where Nalikar was the faculty member at the School of Relativity. Where he acted as a great guide and mentor for him by proceeding in his academic and scientific career. Now let's look at some of the contribution of him towards science field. We all are familiar with Albert Einstein theory of gravity, which uh, which is described by a set of equation which uses mathematics of Riemannian geometry. Professor Vaidya took up the mission and accomplished, which led to the. conception of such a solution which is known as the vaidya matrix his research on general theory uh, uh, theory of relativity started when he went to the bhu in 1942 where he joined the school of relativity he was uh, his discovery on vaidya matrix gave him worldwide reputation at the age of 24 even before the beginning of his professional career now let's see what is the vaidya matrix Vaidya matrix applies to a set of Einstein's equation that describes the gra uh, gravitational field of a star, which has a uh, which has a sizable uh, radiation. It pioneered the key idea of using a ray of light as a coordinate a coordinate frame. In other words, we can also say that it was an idea of a null coordinate, which eventually played a vital role in the research of Uh, research of gravitation theorem during the fourth decades the vaidya matrix has by now found many application in gravitation theory it's widely used and internationally cited to study the problems which are related to relativity and gravitation with this we would like to conclude our presentation thank you everyone for thank the patient hearing Good afternoon everyone. I am Anvesha Praharaj. Today we are here to speak about one of india's most notable scientist and statistician professor prasanta chandra mahalanobis pc mahalanobis was born in calcutta on june 29 1893 he devised the mahalanobis distance and fieldman mahalanobis model which was instrumental in formulating india's strategy for industrialization in the second five year plan Now let's talk about his earlier years and education. After graduating with honors in physics from Presidency College in Calcutta in 1912, he moved to England to study physics and mathematics at the King's College. Just before he left the university in 1915, he was introduced to the concept of statistics by one of his tutors. After returning to India he accepted a temporary position teaching physics at the Presidency College thus becoming a professor in physics there in 1922 However his interest in statistics had evolved into a serious academic pursuit and he applied statistical methods to problems in anthropology 
meteorology and biology later he also worked with the scottish physicist and meteorologist ctr wilson at the cavendish laboratory Coming to the Feldman Mahalanobis model, this model is a neo-Marxian model of economic development created independently by Soviet economist Grigory Feldman in 1928 and Indian statistician P. C. Mahalanobis in 1953. It is mainly used in the second five-year plan. With the help of this, Mahalanobis became essentially the key economist. and becoming the subject to much of india's most dramatic economic debates the essence of the model is a shift in the pattern of industrial investment towards building up a domestic production goods sector thus the strategy suggests that in order to reach a high standard in consumption investment in building a capacity in the production of capital goods is firstly needed a high enough capacity in the capital goods sector expands the nation nations a consumer goods production capacity in the long run he has contributed a lot to the scientific and the economic world some of his contributions are large scale factory surveys all of this introduced the concept of pilot surveys and advocated the usefulness of sampling method early surveys began between 1935 and 1911 and included topics such as consumer expenditure Thanks to him, we also have the Indian Statistical Institute, or ISI. This is a higher education and research institute, which is recognized as an institute of national importance by the 1959 Act of Indian Parliament. It grew out of the statistical laboratory set up by P. C. Mahalanbis in the Presidency College, Calcutta. Established in 1931. The unique institution of India is one of the oldest focused on statistics and its early reputation led it to being adopted as a model for the first in US Institute of Statistics set up at the Research Triangle North Carolina. He has brought numerous laurels to his name. Some of the major ones are Padma Vibhushan in 1968, Officer of the Order of the British Empire in 1942 fellow of the royal society and welden memorial prize in 1944 with this we like to conclude our presentation thank you ayushi and anvesha not only these 75 scientists we the people of this nation salute each and every scientist who has in some way or the other contributed to the development 